Hello everyone and welcome to my Luminar Neo review. I'm going to show you exactly how to use the software. So this is going to be broken into chapters. Um, I'm going to walk you through every single step of editing in Luminar Neo. This is the image we're going to pick, so I'm going to open this out long. So that's the photograph. Now the first thing we need to correct in this image before I do anything else is I actually cut the filter holder because I was using an older filter holder on this particular shot and I actually cut the outside extremities of the filter holder. So I'm going to go in here to edit. I'm going to manually edit this photograph. I'm going to go to Crop AI, which is the first fill above on top here. So I click on that, and that's going to give me the option of cropping my image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull that down along and just maneuver it around until I'm kind of getting rid of the corners. Just when you go up to the top corner or anywhere here, you can actually adjust it from side to side. So what I'm going to look at here now is the two outside edges. One second, there. That's that looks right to me now. So that's what I'm going to pick, and I'm going to click on Apply here now. Loads of problems with this photograph. The exposure isn't correct. It looks really bland because it's a raw file. And also we have these little water spots around the place here too as well, catching light. So we need to get rid of those. And a bit annoyed, dust spots down below here too as well. So we have our cropping done. The next thing is we have the option here of Enhance AI. I can slide this up along and it'll enhance the image. Now the one thing is I love editing my photographs myself. And I love doing them really quickly, which is one of the reasons why I love using Luminar Neo. You can go to your Sky Enhancer AI then too as well. And it's going to adjust the sky. So it's going to enhance saturation and sky detail. Details. So it's getting a bit more contrast in, but that's not the look I was going for in this photograph. So I'm just going to bring both of those back down along again. We'll forget about that. In Sky AI, we have the option of changing the sky. So I can pick that sky for argument's sake there now. And that's going to swap the sky in the photograph then. So boom, there we have it. That's our sky swapped out along. I don't really want that feature here now in this particular image. So, but you have things like sky orientation. So you can actually move it horizontally in the image vertically in the image, the horizontal positioning then too as well. And you have mask refinement if you want to adjust the mask refinement there too as well. There's scene relighting, so you can adjust the strength. So in other words, how realistic the relighting effect is. So you can see it's a blue sky, so it's adding more blue down here and here. So um, again, if you add water then too as well again, you can actually adjust the amount of reflection in the water of the light. So if you really still ponder something here now, it'll actually show you a reflection of the sky back along. But um, I'm just going to switch that off there now again because I don't want it in this particular shot. So what I'm going to do is start off in the develop tool. Now in the develop tool, we've got our exposure. So the exposure slider, slider is going to darken or brighten the image globally. So it's going to affect everything. Shadows, highlights, mid-range tones. It's going to affect a whole lot. So what we're going to do with just with this shot is... We're going to bump it up, um, we'll say we bump it up to there now somewhere. We're going to go smart contrast, we're going to adjust our contrast so quickly up and down. Or you can leave it in the middle for now, we leave it in the middle. I'm going to get my highlights, and what I'm going to do is bring my highlights down a small bit. And I'm going to bring my shadows up so we get a better overall image. And just bring that down and bring my exposure up again. So that's looking kind of good enough there now already, big difference. Black and whites. So what these are going to do, the whites, white slider is going to adjust the brighter parts of the image. So you can see like the sun and the water here in the foreground. It's adjusting the intensity of those. So I can bring them up or down. And um, what I'll do in this one here now is I will just leave that up a small little bit because I actually like it like that. The blacks then I'm going to pull them back down along. So I'll say look. Yeah, somewhere there. That looks good to me. So that is our image roughly around kind of semi-correctly exposed to a certain extent. Um, next thing we're going to do is go to curves. Again here we can adjust specific parts of the image. So I can bring just my highlights down a small bit if I want to. Or adjust my shadows. But bring my blacks back up. So you can adjust specific parts of the tone curve there now. Um, you have your color. So if you go on color you can adjust your color temperature. As in how warm the overall image is. So you can bring it up or bring it down. You can adjust the tint, whether you want it more purple or whether you want it more green. I'm just going to go back to my curves here now again because I made a bags of that. Take all those out and put it back to the way it was. Sorry, one second. So then we have our saturation. So it's going to enhance the amount of saturation or amplify the amount of saturation and then vibrancy. It's going to adjust the amount how vibrant the photograph is. So vibrance controls up and down. And saturation says, so say, look, ah, oh, that's kind of the look I'm going for there now or something. We'll just say for argument's sake, because I just want to give you a really edited look to this photograph. Sharpness here then, you have the overall sharpen control here. 
So I can whack that way off up along there now if I want and give it a couple of seconds and that photograph is gonna be a lot sharper. You have the radius, which is affecting how, the, how big the sharpening effect is in individual areas. So if I actually zoom away in along here now, what we'll do is, if you watch the defining or the outside edge here now, and if I increase the radius in that, wait for it there now, see the halo effect is getting stronger on the outside edges there now. So it's affecting how wide the overall sharpening is. So if I pull it back, you can see it's getting smaller and pull it back again, it's getting less defined, less defined. So what you do is you find a spot where you're kind of going, yeah, somewhere there now maybe, there is a very slight halo effect, so pull it back a small little bit. And there we go. And then the masking then is, it's adjusting how much of the image is actually adjusted by sharpening. So what I'll do is I'll bring that back down along probably around 20, 30%. You notice there is a bit of noise here now in the image too as well. But I am zoomed way in along. If I pull way back along there now, that looks really sharp and that looks good. So that's our sharpening. I'll just close all these back up along here now for a second. So we can see what we're doing. Noise reduction. So the amount of noise in the image itself. So that's your luminosity noise. So if I just zoom in along here now again for a second, sorry now, and pull that over here, give it two seconds for that to pull in along. And what you will see now is the image is no longer as sharp, but there is no noise. So you can see that is completely smooth, but the, that's really blurred now too as well. So if I pull that down, give it a couple of seconds, because as I say, this is a very large file size. It's a 46 megapixel camera. So that is pulling in there now, it's getting sharper. Still not quite right. What I would find is you probably want to bring it back around the eight, nine mark, and you should start to see a small bit of noise start to creep in here, a little bit more detail. Yeah, there goes our detail there, and a small bit of noise in the background. So if I switch it off, back to zero there now, you will find this will get sharper, but there's more noise in your background. So it's a robbing Peter to pay Paul effect. So that is sharper there now but we have more noise here, so. You can use the noise reduction here, or if you have the extension pack, you can use Noiseless AI, which is going to improve the noise even more. It's a bit more intelligent in the way it removes the noise. It doesn't affect sharpness as much. But if you're going to use the, the noise reduction in Lumino Neo itself, be very careful with the adjustments. Again, it depends on the image, but I normally find in a shot like this where there isn't an awful lot of noise, maybe anywhere from two to 10 or 12 or something. So colored in is for color noise. So if there was color noise in the image itself, you can just slide that up along, give it a couple of seconds, and it's gonna remove any color noise in the image. But again, there isn't any color noise in this particular shot, so there's no major issue with it. So the boost control, basically what this does is this adjusts the attack or how aggressive the luminosity, denoise, and color noise controls are. So it's kind of a fine tuning to a certain extent for the luminosity and the color noise controls. Next, we have our optics. And in optics, we have things like auto defringe, we have lens distortion, D vignette, and vignette midpoint. So you can actually correct any form of lens distortion by sliding this one way or the other way. So what I do is I'll actually just Zoom out of this, and if I adjust lens distortion, you can see you can go anywhere from barrel to pincushion distortion. So you can remove either one of the two of them with this. So if I just bring that back to zero. And D vignette, then if I bring this up along, you will see it's getting brighter in the corners, so it's getting rid of any vignetting in the image itself. And bring it back down along again. And then the D vignette midpoint, you can adjust this too as well. So if I brighten that up along, so you can adjust how far into the image the de-vignetting comes in. So you can actually put it way off of so it's only just the very corners, or you can bring it back more this way, so it starts to get brighter further into the image, depending on how much of a vignette is there in your optics. And it depends on your camera, and it depends on the lens you're using. It's mainly for the optics themselves. The next one then is transform, and in this then, you can adjust the image vertically for vertical lens correction, and horizontally for horizontal lens correction, and you can also adjust the aspect. So you can make the image wider or you can make the image taller. So the next thing is the erase tool. So if I go here, select is enabled. So if I just make the size a bit bigger there now, so that should be roughly around right. I just want to get rid of some of those water spots. So I just select them there now first. I'm going to do this really quickly. I'm going to miss loads of them, but I'll get the ones that are just really popping out at me right now. So if I just click on erase here now, what that's gonna do is it's gonna erase those water spots. Now, um, there's also another spot over here and there were spots down below in the bottom corner too as well, but 
In this tool, we also have the option of remove power lines. So it'll remove any power lines from the photograph and remove dust spots. So if you have quite a dirty sensor and if you click on remove dust spots, it'll get rid of the dust spots in the image for you automatically. And there we go, our dust spots are gone. Now, as you can see, there's still quite a few left over there and whatnot. I didn't do an absolutely perfect job. It was only super fast. But that is how the erase tool works. The next one is Structure AI. So when I go Structure AI, I can adjust the amount. So if I increase this, what it's going to do is it's going to add contrast and it's going to add clarity to your image. So you can see it really is making the water really pop there now. So if I turn that up full whack there now, you'll see the sky, the water, it all looks very dramatic. And then if I go to the other extreme and bring it down along, it softens everything out. Now the one thing you'll notice with like these tools is you have masking options. So you can add a mask via the brush, linear gradient tool, the radiant, radial gradient tool, and mask AI. So um, that's a job for another day I'm gonna show you about masking. So um, that is structure AI. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to color here now. And in color we have saturation, so I can adjust the saturation of the image, and up or down, and I can adjust the vibrancy of the image too as well. I'm just gonna bring those up along there a small bit, and color cast in. If there is a strong color cast in the image, you can actually use this, and it'll get rid of the color cast. Now, in this image, the color cast is actually reasonably correct because what's happening is normally the water would be white, but because of the fact the yellow sun is coming through, there's a very slight yellow tint in it. And the same in the clouds too as well. So the color cast is natural, it's normal. I don't want to remove it. We also have our HSL controls down below here. So we can adjust U, we can adjust saturation or luminance. So for argument's sake, if I want to go to U and I'm going to pick orange here now, or pick yellow, sorry, all the better, I can adjust the yellow tones. So if you look at the yellow here, I'm actually adjusting the U control of the yellow. So I can make it more green or I can make it more orangey red. I can do the same then with the saturation. So I can go to the yellow again and I can boost the saturation or bring the, sorry, bring the saturation down or I can bring the saturation back up now. So not only can you change the color tone, but you can also change the amount of color that's actually in the image too as well, as well as the luminance. So if I bring this down, it goes dark, and bring it up, it goes brighter. And you can adjust this for all those individual colors. We have our black and white controls. So basically we can just here convert to black and white. It'll convert the, the image to black and white. You can, you can adjust the lumens all the different colors there as such and saturation all different colors then too as well. Details is a very precise sharpening control. So in small details, if I zoom in on the image here now, let's say if I zoom all the way in here now, let's give it two seconds. So we're gonna look at the small details on the rocks here now. And if I increase the small details, and give it a couple of seconds, what you'll see is all those small minor details start to pop a small bit more. So you can see all the texture in the rock is starting to pop. Now the one thing you will notice is, obviously enough, it's gonna also make texture pop then too as well in the sky. So you have to be very careful with it. So you adjust that, you don't go up full whack, you bring it up a small little bit maybe, and there you go. And then you can do medium details, and what you'll find then is when I bring that up, you'll notice that there's like a halo effect more around the rock, so the rock would be kind of one of the medium effects. If I bring it back down, it's not as sharp. So that's adjusting medium details. And large details then are affecting, it's affecting more or less the, the really bigger sections in the image itself. So again, it's a matter of adjusting those for the specific image and the details that are in the image itself then too as well. Sharpening then is a global sharpening control. What we have to be careful of here is I've already adjusted sharpness in the previous section and details and masking, you can then slide this back for details protection. It's gonna try and help preserve the details in the image itself. And details masking, you can adjust the level of masking in the details. Sharpness mark masking, then you can adjust the sharpness radius and the sharpening masking. Again, they're grayed out there now because I haven't actually adjusted sharpening. Once I click on this, it's gonna give a sharpening radius and sharpening masking, which is what we talked about already in the develop module above here. So the next one then is denoise. So if I click on that, what I can do is luminosity denoise. So I can adjust the luminosity noise slider. So when I bring that up, it's at 27 there now. That is going to get rid of a lot of the noise in the clouds, but you can see it is after affecting the details and rocks a small bit. Now I can bring it up higher, just to give you an overall idea of what it's gonna look like, but it's gonna smoothen out these rock surfaces completely and we lose our details. But that is super smooth now in comparison. If I pull it back and bring it back to maybe around six, seven, eight, ten, or something along those lines, because this image isn't that noisy, you'll still see this bit of noise, but you have some nice detail in the image itself. The same here then for the color noise slider. So if you have a lot of color noise, you can just whack this way off up long. If you've no color noise like we have in this image, 
you don't need to use the color noise slider really as such. On the bottom here then, there's advanced settings. So you can go to boost. The boost control is the control to adjust the attack or the aggressiveness of the above sliders. You can see it kind of as a fine tuning option for luminosity and color denoising. The next one we have here then is landscape. So we go to landscape, we have options like dehaze. So I can slide dehaze up long. And what it's going to do is, it is going to help us to reduce the haze or the mist in the photograph, so it'll help to see the horizon a bit better. If you have a very hazy or misty photograph, that will definitely help. But as you can see, it also is going to give you a bit more punch and add a bit more contrast to your image too as well. So that's the DHA slider up, and if I just pull it back down along now again, Golden Hour, what Golden Hour is going to do is, if I whack this way off up long, it is going to give us that really soft, dreamy Golden Hour effect. It's going to really highlight those color tones in the image. But like anything else, when you slide up to 100, it's going to be a disaster. So I just pull it down along and just give it a slight touch of it, which is going to help those slight golden colors come through a small bit. Foliage enhancer then is just basically if you have grass, green trees, leaves, anything along those lines, plants, you can adjust this up along and it's going to help the greens pop a small bit more in your image. Then we have vignette and on vignette we can choose a subject. So by choosing a subject we're saying this is the center point of our image. This is what we want the person to look at. So if I now adjust the vignetting option, so if I bring that up, you can see it's going white. So it is actually brightening the corners and pull it back down long and it's going darker. And you will notice it's heavier on the bottom and on the right of frame than it is on the left because our center point, if I put a center point in the middle of the image, it's a bit more evenly divided down across the image. If I put it up here, you'll see the our image has gone darker again or I can pull it back down long too as well. So th th there's a lot of different ways you can actually place this. But in the center of the image and either up or down, they both kind of work reasonably well in this image. So now we're heading to the creative features like real light AI. So what I can do is I can adjust the brightness near and far. So I can bring the brightness up of the near foreground and bring the brightness back down of the near foreground. So I can adjust the brightness there. And then of the far away objects, I can adjust that too as well, down and back up along. And I can also adjust the depth because this uses 3D depth mapping. So I can bring the depth forward or I can bring the depth back to as well again. So you can adjust that to whatever you want. So what I'm gonna do is just switch that back off along there now again. We're gonna to go to Atmosphere AI, and in Atmosphere AI, you can add fog. So if I just bring this in along, you can see there's fog quite clearly here in the background. Adjust the lightness of the fog itself and the depth of the fog. So I can pull it more into the image or more back out of the image. You have layered fog, which is again is more sort of a flat fog as such. So if I introduce that there now and the depth, there we have it. So that's our layered fog. Next then we have mist, which is going to give you a very strong mist effect. So again, I can adjust the depth of that. I can adjust the lightness of it and I can adjust the amount of it. So if you want a very slight touch there now, you're going to bring it like that. Or if I go to haze, haze again is going to do the same thing, just slight fractionally different. So again, if I adjust the depth of that there now, it's just adjusting the haze in the image itself. So, and again, I can adjust the lightness too as well and the amount on that. So, sun rays then is the next one. This is one that could, could be possibly handy here now if you wanted to mess around with this to a certain extent. So I can place the sun center. So I'm gonna do is pull this over here because that is the center of the sun. I'm gonna click on amount here now. And boom, there we have it. There are our sun rays amount. And I can adjust the overall look. The sun ray length. So the length of the rays coming through the image, pull them back along or bring them back out. So I'm gonna just bring them back there now somewhere. Maybe there, let's say, penetration, how much they actually fire into the image itself. So even if I bring it something like that now, it looks slightly realistic. Wait there now a second though. So the size of the sun radius, the radius of the sun in the center, we can adjust that. So I'm gonna pull that back down along to here, let's say. And the sun glow radius, how much of a glow there is coming off the sun itself as I adjust that. So again, it helps to make it look a bit more realistic. Again, sun glow amount, how strong it is. So there we go. Ray settings then, it's gonna give us the option of how many rays we want to put in. So we can increase or decrease the amount of rays that are there. And then randomizer is gonna change the positioning of those. So it's gonna just literally turn them around the place. So not every photograph is gonna look the same. If you say, look, I love 39 rays in my image. The next one then is the sun warmth, which is one of the most important parts. So it's gonna help it to tie in with your image. The sun rays warm, so if I bring this back down along, they're going to be cooler. So they're the rays of light coming back out along. I'll bring it up and they're gonna look more orangey, so it's gonna look a bit more realistic. 
So you can just, again, if I pull that back down, you'll see those rays there are looking cooler now and bring it up here and they're looking warmer. So it looks more real. Dramatic here then, if I click on dramatic, you can actually adjust the amount of drama you want in your image. So you can go, wow, I want like loads of clarity, loads of contrast and everything else. You can see all the flaws, the dust spots, which I didn't click on to remove earlier on. And then um, I can just pull that back down along here again, or I can adjust the local contrast. The beauty of those things is sliders are there to be used. You can say, oh my God, I hate that look. And you might say, fair enough. But do you prefer that to this? It doesn't necessarily mean you have to go up to 50, 60%. You can just put it somewhere in the middle. And again, use masking then again, and you can just mask out your foreground and say, I love the effect it has on the foreground. Like, look at the water there. You might say, I love that, but I hate it in the sky. So you can just mask out the sky, and away you go, job done. And in mood then, you can add different moods to the photographs. So you can add different style effects or edits, basically, on the photograph itself. And they just all completely change your shot. You can, so you can change the amount, you can change the contrast and the saturation. Toning then, you can actually change the toning in the shadows and the highlights, the saturation and the hue of the toning then too as well. And again, you could use masking on this too as well. So it is very handy. Going down to the matte effect then. The matte effect, uh, it's something I personally don't use, but different strokes for different folks. It gives you a slightly different, it gives you a slightly different effect. And it's not something I love because um, you, when, I, when I bring it up full, you can see there is, it is a very strong effect. It really is. And it's just something personally, I'm not overly gone on, even at one or two or three or four or five, six. But again, this is just my own personal preference. Other people out there absolutely love it. Mystical then, so mystical, I can bring that in. And what it's gonna do is gonna give you a lovely sort of a warm, soft glow to your image. You can see the rocks aren't as sharp and I can adjust the shadow levels and smoothness here too as well and colorize too as well. But I'm just gonna switch that off for now because the one of the ones I find is actually Every bit as good as not handier is the soft focus. So I can adjust the soft focus. So you could say, oh my God, I love that in the water. Look at that soft, dreamy look in the water. And you say, right, but I don't like it in the sky. I don't like it in the rocks. Again, you can go to your masking and you can use your brush tool and mask out those specific areas. So it'll only affect the water then as such. Then we have glow, which glow then isn't going to be quite as strong, but it's going to give you a slightly softer sort of glow, warmer image. Then we go to the Orton effect. Now the Orton effect is famous for adding in kind of like a glow, but also increasing your brightness and increasing your contrast too as well in your image, but all the time softening it. So it gives you this, this really soft, warm, cozy sort of an effect. And the Orton soft is the same thing, only slightly stronger and more of a softening effect built in. Again, you can go into masking and you can say, look, what I want is I want Orton soft here on the sky and I want drama here in the foreground. So it's going to give it a lovely contrast. Wow, look at the sky. It looks so dreamy and soft. And wow, look how powerful, and how deep the foreground is here. So again, all these things are there just to help you edit your photograph. I wanted to go into Orton effect here and I wanted to increase this to a certain extent. It's part of the reason why I left the image just fractionally underexposed because I just wanted to pop in here and just increase that a small little bit just to kind of soften it down and give it a, give it a slightly dreamy effect, I suppose. So film grain then, film grain is basically going to add grain to the image itself. So that is an extreme case there now, but you can actually pull it back and you can change the size and the roughness. So you can change the size of the grain here. And you can also change the roughness then too as well down below here so then next we have the portrait section so we have portrait bucket ai we have face ai skin ai body ai and high key what i'm going to do here is i'm going to edit a different photograph on this another day and do a portrait editing session to show you how to edit a portrait because it's completely different to a landscape shot so i'm going to do that at a later date on the professional side of things then you have super contrast color harmony dodge and burn and clone so if i go super contrast first what i can do is adjust the contrast for the highlights specifically and individually and for the mid contrast individually and then shadows contrast individually so again reasonably straightforward but very effective too color harmony then we can adjust the brilliance and we can adjust the warmth then too as well we can adjust the color contrast so the amount of contrast in the colors themselves the u and we have split color warmth. So in other words, we can adjust whether our yellow tones in the image are more green or whether they're more orange. And then we can adjust our cool tones, whether they're more sort of a greeny blue 
or whether they're more purple. Finally, then we've color balance. So we can adjust the color balance for our shadows, midtones, and highlights. So that is our color harmony. We have dodge and burn. And in dodge and burn, then, very basically speaking, what we're going to do is we're going to set our paint size. So what I'm going to do is I'm selecting light in here now. So this is the area we want to lighten. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint in this whole area here. I'm doing this really roughly now. Please forgive me. This looks terrible, I'm sure. But uh, as I say, this is purely just for demo purposes. So that's going to be lighten. And then this is going to be darkened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken this section here. Because what we want to do is create a bit of a contrast in our foreground with our black sand sort of an effect and our white water. Again, I leave this up really high and this looks absolutely horrific. I'm fully aware of that. But what you do then is you go back and you get your amount slider and you pull this back down a lot and you bring it back to where you like it. And you say, yeah, that looks kind of reasonably okay there now. Or you can bring it up a small bit. Say, oh yeah, I prefer that. And you're saying, brilliant, right, perfect. So that's our dodge and burn tool. The last one then we have is our clone tool, or I should say our second last one, because there's one I didn't cover as of yet. So what you do is you can adjust the size of the clone tool, and then you can you select the source or what you want to copy. So what, let me say, I'll pick this rock here now for Adam's sake. So I'm going to pick this rock, and what I want to do is I want to copy that rock in here. Okay, give it a couple of seconds now. What it's going to do is it's going to get that rock, and it's going to copy that rock to over here. So it is on the way and it should be there fairly soon. Again, this is going to take a small bit of time because it's a 46 megapixel file. So it is going to take a bit of time for it to render and to copy in line. Now, I mightn't have, I mightn't have done that absolutely perfectly. I should have probably went a small bit wider on the outsides. As you can see, it is a bit soft on the outside extremities there now. Give it two seconds and boom, there we go. And yes, I actually overdid it because you can see that rock is coming through <laughs> in the background there now too as well again. Again, I'm just doing this super quickly and I'm making an absolute mess of it. And anytime you do make a mistake, you can just go Control and Z and it'll actually bring you back along again. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the tool and close that down along. So that's the clone tool. So you can copy anything you want in any part of the image and create it again in another part of the image. So the one last thing I haven't, I haven't discussed with you as of yet is masking. So let's have a look at masking now super fast. So let's say I want to add in a mask on this image. So I go over here to masking. I can add in a graduated filter. So if I just click on that and I can just click and drag it up to affect the image. And you can see the red section here now is the section that's going to be adjusted. So if I go back to adjustments and if I click on, let's say I go here to, to light and I can increase the exposure and it's going to increase the exposure on my foreground here now. And I can say, oh, I want to add smart contrast or something. You can do that. Or I can go to my blacks and whites and pull my blacks down because what I actually want is I want to darken down this section here. And you're saying, look, we get it roughly, roughly around white. And you're thinking, yeah, that looks kind of reasonably okay. So you're saying, yeah, okay, I'm happy with that. So that's before and that's after. It's only a very slight touch there now again. So again, as I'm looking at that there now, the one thing I'd like to adjust in the image it's looking good enough, but what I would like to do is I would like to add in a mask. So I'm going to get a mask and I'm going to get the brush tool here. And I'm going to paint in this section here because I do not like that. That is too bright and it just, it just doesn't look right. So I'm just going to grab that and just go boom like that. And I am going to go back to adjustments now and grab my exposure slider and just pull that back a small little bit. So I'm looking at this and thinking, yeah, this looks nice, but that area here and here is still a bit too bright. So what I can do is I can just go along and say, right, I can pull this down even more and say, oh, well, yeah, that's right there now. That's right there. But this is way too dark up along here. So that, that just looks wrong. So I can go back to my masking and I can go to erase. And when I'm on erase then, what I can do is I can go to strength and pull this back a small bit and bring the size of the brush up. So what I can do now is when I go to erase this, See the way when I pulled along here now on my mask, the mask is still there and it's still red, but the red isn't as strong. And all of a sudden now, we can start to see. That looks good now. That's really, really close. I'm going to go back to erase and pull the strength way down along because that's my trick. If I bring the strength down here, it's not going to have as much of an impact. So I just grab this along and grab this along. And now, yeah, that looks good. So yeah, I'm really happy with that there now. So I'm going to go, oh my God, look, there we go. There's my finished photograph.
So thanks a billion everyone for watching. I hope it really helped you understand how Luminar Neo works and um, see you out there.